Hey everybody, how are you doing today? Hope you're all doing well. Oh. Again, it's rainy, so I apologize if my webcam keeps switching up brightness, but... Anyway, uh, yeah, sorry I'm a bit late. Computer didn't cooperate this morning, but that's okay, I'm here now. Um, but yeah, we're gonna work more on the new terrain engine. Okay, that's fine. I actually need this. Um, so I was trying to test if a certain point on the hexagon was within a hexagons or a triangle wedge using barycentric coordinates. Um, but I actually think um, there's one problem with this is that um, if a point actually lies... Okay, let's see. Let's open up. Diagram again. We still will need to convert to barycentric coordinates, but I'll do that. Um, but yeah, we can't. We shouldn't use that to actually test to see if a point should be deformed or not. So, not the one I wanted. Okay, so like right here. Okay, so this is the center of the hexagon. So we actually want to deform points that lay out here in case um, the mesh actually extends beyond the bounds. And if we just checked for barycentric coordinates, um, this would actually be missed. So I'm going to instead try to see if a point lies between two... Um, two lines, which is kind of how I was thinking about doing it before. And so there's two ways you can do it. You can either use the cross product between these three points, which um, will tell you if you're on the left or the right side of the line, or I can convert this to an angle. And from there, I'd be able to see what fan it's in. So probably the angle way is actually better now that I'm thinking about it because then I could just test once to see what angle the point is in. Or what uh, wedge the point is in. Instead of having to test, do a cross product between each of these lines. So um, I guess we'll do that. Okay, so basically going to need to do, we have a triangle, oops, what I wanted to do, okay, so if there's an angle here, I guess I'm going to need to do, yes, yeah, so I'll know this, no, that's our tangent, I'll know this distance, Okay. Let's, um, so I don't make any silly mistakes here. Let me see if I can find a way to do this. So, um, find angle of a point in a circle. Okay, so it is arc tangent. Oh, yeah, okay, so. Yeah, of course. So we actually do have. Okay, so if I have a triangle here. Um, I want. Oh, 
let's I think I'll just draw my own. So imagine a triangle from this point, and that should be a right angle. I'll just guess. So obviously this is just a difference in x coordinates, and this is a difference in y coordinates. So we can use the programming function atan2, which just stands for arc tangent, um, and it will tell us the angle. It actually does a lot of helpful things like checking for division by zero errors. So yeah, I should have just done that from the start, but okay, so don't care about that right now. All right, so I need to know the center. Okay, well, this actually, that's going to be the world position. So I actually want to know the offset position now. Okay, it's just actually just this. And then the world position we would... Um, add the transforms position to it. Okay, so this gives us the, um, the position around the center of the mesh. And then this would give us the position in actual world space. So we need the offset to calculate this ATAN2. Okay, so float angle is... Okay, and you put, it's just, um, what's the word, like, not really tradition, but you always put the Y as the first argument to ATAN2, which I, which is a little, um, counterintuitive, but actually, um, for these, since we want to find the angle on the X, Z plane, we'll actually pass Z through there. And let's, um, I think I'll just actually debug log this angle so I can uh, see what it is. So um, I guess I'll print out the position and then the angle. Oops. And I think, oh yeah, so this will return it in radians and just for um, ease of debugging, I'll go ahead and change that to degrees. So angle times math f radians to degrees. All right, so let's see. Oh, I'm missing one parenthesis. Let's go ahead and test and see what that prints out. Okay, um, we can go ahead and test some of those points by just creating an empty object and sending it to these positions. So obviously the angle here is zero because it's at the center. Um, it's nice that that doesn't throw an error actually. The negative 0 0.9, uh, the Y doesn't matter, and then one half. Okay, so this one, it says it's 150 degrees. So I will guess. So this one says 90 degrees. So let's see what that is, because that'll be a little easier to tell what to do. Okay, so zero obviously must be right here. So 90 degrees is straight up. Um. Should maybe. I guess it doesn't really matter a whole lot trying to think of because I like to have zero degrees be straight up or wait I don't know I guess it doesn't really matter so anyway if it was in this wedge then it would be between 30 and negative 30 um, that's a bit confusing let's see so the int wedge. So maybe the best way to do that. I'm trying to 
then this the negative 150 must be that point so yeah, this is one eight negative 180 or just 180 same thing probably the easiest thing to do would be to convert this to just go around from 0 to 360 so I think I'll add uh, 180 to the number oh wait that one that would shift zero to be over here, wouldn't it? So what I need to do is if it's less than zero, I should add 360 to it. Oh, this is wrong. Oh yeah, it's still in radians, so if angle is less, Okay, well, it's still less than zero. Then we need to add two pi. Okay, so let's check to make sure I did that math correctly. Okay, so zero, and then this one is here. 150 and then down here it goes to 210 instead of negative 150. Okay, this one 330, so that's right here. Yeah, so that should be right. Okay, so now that I have that, I need to um, somehow collapse these ranges. Okay, so now this is a little confusing because now wedge zero okay. um, is angle zero to 30 and then also 330 to 360. So maybe what I should do is add 30 degrees to everything so zero starts right here. Okay, and then what is 30 degrees in radians? Okay, it's just pi over three. Oh yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Oh wait, no, that's 60, so pi over six would be 30. So this doesn't really matter because that's just on the center. Okay, so now this point is 180. I guess that works. And then 240. This is 120. This one is 60. This one is 360. Three hundred. Again, this one is zero zero, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, um. Okay, so what I really wanted for this point was to be zero, and this is point, I haven't said it's 60, so maybe I needed to subtract 30 from it instead of adding. Sorry, I'm not very good at trigonometry in my head, so. Okay. 
And this is 120, so this one must be 60 and zero, hopefully. Okay, well, it's saying it's 360, but it's the same thing. Actually, I guess, okay. Well, which, what is point? What is gonna be wedge one? Oh, also, these are gonna be winding counterclockwise. So I really want this point to be zero. Okay, so let me see. Because this is wedge number one. Let me see, does text position even have something for this already? It neighbor direction. Okay, I did already have something kind of like it. So yeah, I need to subtract it to match Unity's rotation system, which is clockwise. And then, so facing towards neighbor. So yeah, this neighbor is the same as a wedge. So I could kind of use this. Okay, let's try that. Uh, I guess I should have checked that before I did all this myself. <clears throat> okay, so variable neighbor equals hex position facing towards the neighbor. And this will just be vector. Oh, it uses a hex position instead of a vector. Okay, so let's see, um, point in neighbor, I guess, and this will just be a vector two point. And so we'll just use this. Fortunately, there's not an easy way, I think, to... Like, combine this function with these two. Should I use a vector two or should I just use vector threes? Probably a vector three. Okay, I guess I can extract this function. which would be um, angle to neighbor. And then all this does is just does a arc tangent. Okay, so that should be fine. Okay, so let's just make sure that this would make sense. This is a lot easier than duplicating that code. Yeah, so what this actually does, I see, is it, yeah, first it adds 360 to make everything positive, and then it adds 60 to offset the angle. 
probably so that zero is pointing straight up. And it divides by 60 because, yeah, we need to figure out what wedge that point or that angle is in. And every wedge is 60 degrees. And then last but not least, it does modulo 6 so that to take care of rounding errors, I think. Alright, so let's try that. Okay, well no, something's wrong because it's saying everything is east. So, I want to have better printing. Okay, so offset position. Well, we're pretty sure these positions are right. But something's wrong with this point and neighbor function. Okay, so I just reuse the arc tangent, obviously. Okay, and also I should move this function. Yeah, these are the same, so. Like I messed up something there. Oh, do I need to? Oh, I see. So this angle is in degrees. That was the issue. So let's do angle times math f radians two degrees. Oh, I should do times equals. I could also just convert this to just be in radians, but. Okay, so now I don't need that multiplier there. Okay, so now this one says east. Okay, so the thing about this is that all of these are on the edge, so it'll be kind of interesting to see what wedge it assigns it to. But it as long as it's one of the two, it could be, I'll, I'll be happy. Okay, so this one is negative, and then one half, so it says northwest, which is fine. And then this one down here, and it says west, which is okay. Um, this one, it says is northeast. Yeah, so since all these are on the border, it's just gonna pick the one that I guess it rounds to. And I don't really care um, which wedge it gives it to because when we deform these with the barycentric coordinates, um, it would actually get the same value if it was on this wedge or this wedge because it doesn't use either of the outside points on the triangles. So it doesn't actually make any difference. Um. Okay, so now I have that, finally. Let's um, convert it to barycentric coordinates. So I'll just pass this in. Oh, it didn't. For some reason, it didn't type an extra parenthesis there. Okay, so we had some issues with this before, but maybe now that we don't test outside the points, it will make a little bit more sense. And again, a barycentric coordinate is really just um, a combination of all triangle points to get to a certain point. So say for example this point in barycentric coordinates is one zero zero because it's this point entirely and none of those two whereas this one is one third each of these points in a way you can kind of think about it like i said last week is if you 
place a weight on each of these corners. This point corresponds to, like, if it was a ball, where it would balance to. That's kind of how I like to think about it. Okay, so offset position. Oh, also these are using all... Okay, I think this was the error because this was using the Y coordinate when it actually should be using the Z coordinate. So let's... Point 3D. Actually be um, a vector 2. 3D. Oops. X. Yes, yeah, so this was probably actually the error that I was encountering last week. Because I was using the Y coordinate instead of the Z coordinate of this vector. Or not last week, yesterday. Oh, and I forgot to actually print out. Okay, so each of these, again, since all these points are on a corner, they should um, just be completely one point on each of the barycentric coordinates. So it should all be like one zero zero or zero one zero, something like that. So hopefully, that's what will show up. That's a little weird. Did it update? Oh yeah. Okay, so this one, it says it's on the east wedge. Oh, you can see it just gives one zero zero because zero is the center. Um, move that out of the way. And then here um, is this point. And it says it's on the northwest wedge, which is this one. So it's zero, one, zero, because here yeah, we go clockwise, so. This is the first point, and yeah, we can see it's saying it's right there. Or the second point, just sorry. Then this one's down here. It says it's on the west wedge. So one, two, three, and yeah, zero, one, zero. So that's working. Okay, so I think that's all good. Let's see. So now I think to test this, I should add some points that are in the middle of the triangle. So let me open up file. Um, okay, so how would I... I think just for simplicity, I'm going to delete these faces on the bottom. Because they won't be visible anyway. And I don't think I can just, oh, well, I can take, so I'd really like to just add another border around here, so then I can add a point in the middle, but I don't think there's an easy way I can do that and still keep the dimensions at one. Okay, well, I'll just do this. Won't be perfect, but that's okay. And then I'll just add a kind of useless cut. That doesn't look good. Um, now I think about it, this is do something else.
And I'll go ahead and delete this edge as well. Okay, so now I'll select this edge ring. Oh, oh I was pressing the window key, not alt. Oh, it's not going to do it for me. Oh, it's because this vertex right there. Do I have... Oh yeah, I've got other ghost vertices. Okay, so now it should select that ring. And if I... Now I can do what I wanted. I can extrude. Okay, I want to go inwards. Um, and now I'll select this edge and just make a face across it. Oh, actually, before I do that, let's um, cut another edge there. So now these will be hexagon or um, a quad. Okay, so this will be a little more interesting. Do I want to... Okay, well these points are still all on the edge, so really these points would be the only ones we'd test. Um, let me see. So... That's kind of weird, isn't it? Okay, so this is like completely useless, but I want to do it just to see if the barycentric coordinates make sense. Um, R. Okay. Uh, now I think about it, it might not have updated. Oh no, it did. Okay, so let's get light out of the way. Okay, so let me see. Yeah, so I'm seeing some very centric coordinates. Let's test this one. Okay, so this is negative. Point three two three um one and then negative point six four one two. Okay, so it's this point here. So yeah, we know it's on the southwest wedge, which is correct, and then it's giving me this very centric coordinate. So let's see if that actually makes sense. So it's saying it's only a small um, amount this one which yeah is correct and then it's saying it's slightly closer to this side than this side which yeah looks about right okay maybe we should do a test okay this is actually let's try remultiplying these um, against the points that make up the triangle and see if we actually get back to the original offset. I already have this function to do what I was doing there. Okay, so private vector three, um, apply very centric. Okay, let's just call it very. So vector, um, uh, 
Well, I don't know if this will actually be how we do it in the final one, but just for now. And I'll just copy these. So we just return point A times berry dot X plus point B times berry dot Y plus point C times berry dot Z. And so hopefully when we, we get this value back, it will be the same as this offset position. So let's um Okay, so we're going to look at this vector and this fourth vector should um, have the same value or close to it anyway there might be some rounding errors which will be fine okay that's not the same oh again it's because yeah notice that the y value here is the same as the z value it's because very centric coordinate doesn't take into account this y um, okay so yeah we're actually these are actually a vector two so vector two um, and then I need to return a new vector three. Oh, why? Okay, so again, let's just disregard the Y value because it doesn't actually matter for this very centric calculation. But we can see that the X and the Z values are the same, which is what's really important. I'm just gonna check a couple of these. Oh, my webcam. Okay, it's gotten dark again. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, it's again the disadvantage to using natural light. And I can't use the auto balance on my webcam because it tends to um, be way too washed out. I guess there's probably another program I can use. I'll have to look into that. But anyway, it looks like this is all correct. Okay, that's cool. So now I have kind of the hard math out of the way. So now what I want to do, let's get rid of this debug. I want to go back to having a more complete map. And the whole point of this is that I want to scale inwards um, edges of hexagons when they don't have a touching neighbor. So it's going to be like a bit of a slope. So for this hexagon, for example, this point and this point will be scaled inwards, but these point will stay the same because they have something touching. Or this one, all three will be scaled inward. And for example, I should probably have one more up here or something. But like if the height of this cliff is two, then it would be scaled inward even farther. And I think that will just like, cause right now, I mean, this would be fine. There's nothing wrong with having this blocky look, but I think just having in this slight scaling will um, make the whole thing look a lot more polished. Um, so let's actually 
Just for testing, let's create another hex. Um, at one, one. Yeah, I don't know if this is actual right position. Okay, yeah, so I just duplicated something. I actually want... Oh yeah, I want this one to be a little higher because I just want something to have um, a two height cliff face. So I actually need to do that. Okay, and you can see there's these lines up here. That's not really an issue. It's just because Unity's wireframe drawing method, I noticed does that a bit. Okay, so now, I guess I could add some height to this. Not that it really matters a whole lot. Something like that. And then I could make some of these points stick outward. Oh, I don't think that would actually look very good, but for testing. But let's just leave it for now. Okay, well now we've got a bit more 3D. Okay, so now what I need to do is, yeah, I just for every, for this block, I need to find the inset for each point. Okay, well, I guess I should actually just find, well, it doesn't really matter how I store it. Okay. Um... Uh, let's just use vector threes. This will be, um, I guess, deformed corners. Okay, so I, for every point on here, I'm going to need to find if I have a neighbor than the deformed corner. Oh yeah, it's just going to be my actual corner. If I don't have a neighbor, then I'm going to need to find the height of the cliff. Okay, and also, yeah, so the cliff faces, it's a little confusing. So the cliff faces, for example, are on neighbors, but actually I'm going to need to find the position of these corners. So every side or neighbor influences two corners. And how I want it to work is that there's no cliff, then the corner should override any inset. So okay, maybe what I should actually do is for every side store the cliff height. And then from that I can figure out the inset. Oh yeah, the corner positions. Okay, so cliff heights. This should be six, not three. Okay, so let me see. Private, um, I don't have to do that. 
figure. Oh, I guess we'll just return the cliff height. So get cliff height. And so I'll use hex position. Um, hex and then neighbor. Okay, so what I need to do. Okay, so I guess the hex position. Let's do um, neighbor direction, just uh, make this a little simpler. And neighbor hex is my hex plus hex position, um, axis vectors. I think this is right. So the neighbor direction should have the same index. So for northeast, yeah, we go one row up. That's right. And then east, we move one column to the right. Yeah, so I think, yeah, these do match up. I thought they did. Okay, and so now I know the neighbor, I can find, I just need to find the height. So I'm going to actually grab some code from the old terrain system for that. I guess I can just find it in the file system. and scripts. Okay, um, so I think this is in the layout. Or no, it would be the board index, yeah. So I have this get surface, that's what I wanted. Okay, um, yeah, this will be a slightly different. Okay, so how do I tell if it's valid? So I guess if hex dot column is less than zero or hex dot column is greater than the number of columns or hex dot row is less than zero or hex dot row is greater than number of rows, then we'd return false. Okay, and number of layers. Well, that's it, it's easy. Flat dot column plus a row times number of columns. Okay, so now we just kind of need to look up. Times uh, the crater layer size. Or I guess this would be... Uh, so I'm going to need to get 
or calculate the layer size here, and that's just the number of columns times the number of rows. Oops. Hey, Happy Gamer. I'm doing pretty good. You're doing good just watching the World Cup. Oh, cool. Yeah, um, I got that started. I'm not really huge in the sports, but I do like watching the World Cup from time to time. Okay, so, um, yeah, if this, right now, if this is not null, then we know that there's a block there. Um, but actually... Oh, yeah, so, yeah, the first time that there's a block, because we start at the top and work down. So the first time there's a block, we actually set the layer and break. That makes sense. Yeah, not active, but it's a bit fun to watch. Yeah, that's my um, my philosophy about it. Also fun to watch code. Well, thank you. I'm glad that you get some something out of it. Okay, so now I have this get surface altitude. I think I could just pass this through. And so the cliff height is just the difference between the neighbor hex and mine. Um, but I don't care if the neighbor is higher than me. So let me see. I want maximum, or I guess minimum. No, 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 max. Yeah, because if it's negative, I don't want to worry about that. So if I have a higher layer then that means my cliff is higher so hex dot layer minus neighbor dot layer so this sh should be the right thing let's return that okay um we have four less than six so i just need to figure out the cliff height for each side so cliff heights i equals get cliff height i guess i should get my hex position first okay, so i have the index i can convert that to rows and columns pretty easily um so okay the column is just the index. Okay, since it has layers, this is a little confusing. I have to find what layer I'm on first. Or do I? No, I don't think it matters. This should just be by the number of rows. Or number of columns. And then um, the row is divided by number of columns. But first I've got to remove the layers. So, um, greater num rows. And then the layer is just index divided by the number of rows. I guess maybe I should test this. Yeah, so, okay, I don't have to worry about the number of rows here because... Um, I just want to get down to the lowest column. But here, first I've got to take out the layers by um, doing modulo number rows and then figure out what row I'm actually on. Okay, so I think this is right. Oh, this, yeah, this part's actually wrong, so I need to do the number of columns times the number of rows. That's the layer size, obviously. Okay. 
Okay, so I think that's good. Okay, so maybe before I go any further, test this. Um, Trying to figure out the best way to do it. I think I just need to make a smaller map for now again. And then I'll just create something on top. Let's just debug log. Okay, let's see if those actually make sense. How long did it take you to master my coding? Um, well, I don't know if I'd say I'm a master yet, for one, but I've been programming for a pretty long time now, probably about 15 years, but. I would say I got comfortable to where I could um, figure out most things in C-sharp after about, I don't know. Well, I did go to school for computer science, so I don't, that has a big thing to do with it, but probably after about six or so years. See you later. Okay, Afi Gamer, thanks for coming by. I think I, sorry, I missed that one comment of yours, I think. I got a little too sucked into the math, but thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it makes me feel old to say it out loud. Okay, so anyway, this that's fine. Okay, so yeah, they all... Those work anyway. I guess I should have tested something on a different row. Okay, so let's yeah, just make one more hexagon here. Okay. Um, okay, so there's something wrong with the row calculation. So did I do this backwards? Okay, so what happens here, so the index is 5 and I want this to resolve to 1. Okay, so I think I did do it backwards. I need to subtract or divide first and then do the modulo. Uh, I did this. Okay, this should be number of columns right there. Okay, play. Okay, yeah, now those make sense. Also, what do I, what do I say the cliff height is if it's invalid? So, I just return this so really what i should do um let's see uh i can't get this just yet but i need to see if my neighbor is invalid so if is valid neighbor hex then i'd set that to um, get surface altitude Otherwise, I would just say the cliff height is my layer plus one because yeah, if we're at layer zero, the cliff height would be one. I'll just do that. Okay. 
Okay, and I guess we should print out the cliff heights here. I'm going to use a string builder, which is really just a fancy way to create a string in multiple lines. And so I'm just going to append the cliff height. And then something like that. And then I'll add the hexagon like before. Okay, and then we'll just debug log the string builder. Oops. Okay, so zero, zero here. Let's see what the cliff heights are. So it starts, this should be side one, and it says there's no cliff height, which is correct, because we have a neighbor. And then no cliff height here, because we have a neighbor. And then here it says, well, for everything else, we have a cliff height of one, because we've reached the edge of the world. And then up here, yeah, so we have no neighbors, but then um, this is actually... A little different than I would have thought. So let's see. This one should be two. Because that's northwest. And two. And then for some reason it says these are two. And then one, one. Oh, I see. The reason is because... Okay, so these are outside of bounds. But these two hexes are inbound. We just don't have anything on the floor. How would I deal with that? Because right now the surface always expects to find a block, because that's how it works in the actual game. But not necessarily here. Oops, what did I just do? I press control tab instead of shift tab. Okay, I guess we'll just start a negative one, and that way it'll stay there if we never find anything. That should be fine. Yeah, so now that's working more how I expected. Um, except... Oh, wait, I'm supposed to, yeah, there. Okay, so now it's saying this one has a cliff height of one, which is not true. Um, okay, so something is still a little bit messed up. Oh, because I have to check if it's, yeah. Before I didn't check zero because this, there was always assumed to be something at the last layer. Because in the final game it does, you can't ever have just a void. Or in the actual game, but in this one, you can. Okay, so now I think all this is right. Zero, zero, one, one, one. And then this one. One, except zero, zero. And this one. One, one, zero, zero, one, one. And then here, two, 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 one, one. Okay, so the cliff heights all make sense. Okay, so now I need to calculate the inset for each, depending on the cliff height. Okay, so let's see, inset amount 
would be so we gotta take the minimum cliff height for the two corners that are the two sides that a corner touches so we can do cliff heights i okay so for the neighbor it starts okay yeah this is right and then the next one is cliff heights i plus one but then of course i need to loop around because when we get to six we actually need to switch back to zero so that's what that modulo is doing there so we get the minimum cliff height and then um so the position so i want to have the slope inset for each height r yeah, for the cliff. Oh yeah, for every unit of cliff height, I'm going to add this inset. So, obviously in the final game, we'll probably want to have like a maximum, but I'm not going to worry about that here. Okay, so the vector 3 normal is... Just this value, except without turning it into a vector 2. Wait, is this correct? Yeah, because the first... Okay, I think what I actually have to do is... Get the corner... Counterclockwise of me. Okay, so let's look back at the hexagon. So for corner zero, we actually want to get neighbors... These two neighbors, and the one counterclockwise for me is actually corner minus one. And when we're doing a cycle, like with modulo, corner minus one is the same thing as corner plus five modulo six. So that's what I did there. And then this one is actually the same index as me. So this is actually the correct way to do it. So anyway, I have the normal position. And then um, I need to get the inset position, which is just... Or the, yeah, the inset. Um, I don't know, vector. Is just negative normal position. Uh, normalized. Because we want to go, well, because zero, zero is always the center. So we want to go back in towards the center. And I want to normalize it and then multiply it by the slope and set. Although this corner direction is already a unit vector. Okay, so let's do um, vector three. Corner direction. I probably don't have to get all these values, so say um corners i is corner direction times x position length unit minus negative oh i gotta have to do that so normal oh what is it corner direction times slope inset times the inset amount okay and here's an an easy way to um, do a slight optimization uh, you should put parentheses around um, a float multipliers when you're trying to multiply by a vector just because it will do this first and then do the vector multiplication afterwards. Otherwise, you do two vector multiplications, which is slightly slower. So anyway, we get the normal position of the vector, which is this. And then I subtract backwards on the direction based on the inset amount. Um, and so that should do the trick. Hmm. 
Okay, so now that I have that, I have the bar barycentric coordinates, and then I just need to apply the barycentric coordinates with the deformed corners, and then we'll get the actual position. Okay, so let's see. Deformed. So this apply barycentric before it is used the fan, but instead I should just pass in the deformed. Oh, actually I can still do it the same way. Uh, let me see. But instead of doing this, I would just use the deformed. Okay, um, so yeah, we already know this function works, so that should be all I have to do there. And then, so now I've deformed the point. Now I just gotta convert it back to the local position on the mesh, which is, I use the inverse transform point. And then I, uh, is that right? Okay. So this actually returns the offset position, not the world. We actually don't even need this world position, so. Okay, I think this is right. Let's test it out. Okay, something's wrong. Okay, so it's all on a flat plane. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay, let's not... Let's just do this and make sure that I didn't mess up something else. Okay, so that still works. So yeah, something's happening here. Oh, okay. So, so I didn't take back into account the original Y. So what I should do, so the Y won't change. Factor three. Uh, that's not what I want to do. Deformed X and then offset position Y. Formed Z. Okay, so it did, although, okay, so you can kind of tell here it did bring these edges in, although, yeah, so right here, I don't really like having this lip, so what I'd actually want to do is have a slope here where it smoothly changes between the two. Um, probably easiest way to do that. What would be the easiest way to do that? I would just kind of need the deformed corners, but with one less um, deformation. Oh, okay, so maybe these cliff heights should be 12 and then okay this is okay. 
Let's let me see. Vector three, um, undeformed. And then Vector three deformed deformation or let's just say inset. Okay, and then form corners I is undeformed plus inset times inset amount, and then deformed corners I plus six is undeformed plus. Inset uh, minus um, so I could just do minus one, but that could give us a negative. So what I actually have to do is math f maximum we don't want to go below zero okay and so now we actually need to find yeah so i think i'll go back to just passing the vector threes here I guess we might as well pass point A as well. I think we don't really need to, but Okay, so I have that and so now this the Y position on the offset tells me the interpolation value between the top and bottom deformation corners. I kind of have it backwards, I just realized. Because if y is zero, it should be closer to the bottom. So let's, okay, let's just switch this around. And I guess to make it a little cleaner, put that on top. Okay, so let's see. Float y lerp is offset position dot y times the hex position. Do I have a height? I don't think I have a function for the height, but I just use one, so that's fine. This is the. I'll just leave that there for future. Okay, so now I need to interpolate between those three values, so... Okay, well the first one is always just zero, actually. Vector three, zero. Uh, let me see, so int corner. A is just integer of the neighbor, and then int corner B is corner A plus one mod six. Okay, so corner A and 
pointer A plus six for the top layer, and then we'll just lerp with this Y lerp value. What's it not like about that? Oh, this should be vector three instead of math F. Corner B, and I don't need to pass that anymore, just a very centric. Okay, so that should work, and then I still just pass through the Y because it's not actually deformed. Alright, so let's try that out. Okay, we got an array index out of range. Uh, oh, the cliff heights was 12 instead of the de deformed corners. Oh gosh, now it's starting to get sunny again. Okay, so that is not right. Let me... Okay, so it's definitely deforming, but oh, that's strange. Okay, well, let's just do this and see if it still works how it was before. It works except for the top layer. Strange. So for some reason, this hexagon, it's anything that has a cliff height of two. Okay, so something is weird here. So I'm using the bottom values, obviously. Okay, let's use the top ones and see if they are messed up. Okay, yeah, so all the top values are messed up, so something about the inset is not working. Oh, I'm multiplying it wrong. So this, instead of inset amount, this should be the slope inset, okay. Okay, so yeah, this looks back. This looks how it was before. Let's try again. Let's just go based on the bottom. And then we'll try interpolating between them. Okay, yeah, nothing wrong there. Okay, so now we've got some slopes. Yeah, so it looks pretty cool. We can see here it's sloping upwards, but then they match up whenever there's a neighbor. Hmm, but actually, It'd be nice if this 
deformed inwards, but do I want to do that? Well, because then I'm going to have to change the way it works because right now deformation goes back towards the center, but here I don't want it to go towards the center. I want it to just move that way. I think that would look good. But let's leave this and just try it with a bigger map and see if there's any problems there. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Okay. So I do like this pretty well. Um, we could, like I said, try to scale these inward, but I think that's going to be a bit of work. And I want to try another prototype to see if it works better. Okay, because like for right now we have everything as a block, but I was thinking... I don't know if this would be a good idea, but... They could maybe supply like models for the top of terrain and then se separate cliff models. And that way you can kind of combine these the cliffs and the top of the terrain together and you could if you wanted to you could have like a blending cliff that blends from dirt to I don't know water below or something without having to have different combinations for each and I was also thinking that we could even do like wedges but I think that would start to not look too good I don't know though because I think if we go a little bit too far with that we, I might start to get into the problem or, oh yeah, what's going on with this? I think it might just be how Unity decided to triangulate that. Oh yeah, so these faces are kind of weird. What I should do is just add a cut there to decide. Or something fall, I think it was just Nothing important. Okay, and sometimes I don't know why Blender doesn't like to cut between meshes. It's kind of annoying. Oh, why is it not doing it? I think there's some option. That didn't do anything. C. No, I don't want. Uh, midpoint snap. That's not what I want. E. New cut. Okay. Um. I don't know why it's not cutting between it. I'm still not super used to Blender. So I have cut through on. That doesn't do it. I think I can do it this way and then just press F. Okay, and there we go. It just creates a uh, edge between them. I always forget about that option. Okay, now it fixed that error because I... Oh, no, it didn't. So what's happening here, we can see, is that 
Unity triangulates every um, quad because Unity just works with triangles. So, like here, I decided to triangulate the quad by using these two points, which created a strange geometry right there. I think when I reload the game, since I added those edges myself, yeah. So now Unity doesn't have to choose how to do it. Yeah, right here is not that good either, but it's not that big of a deal because this is just for testing anyway. Okay, so... Did finish this prototype and I think it does look pretty good. But like I said, I don't know if it's what I want to do. Let's turn off the wireframe. Because okay, like I'm having, I'm struggling trying to think of the way to do terrain that gives modders lots of freedom, but also can make things look good. And I think this way is very simple. But say for example, the terrain wanted to have some kind of blending here if this was, I don't know, lava and ice, for example. There's not really a way that the terrain could just have a special cliff face here. So that's why I kind of wanted to separate it out and that way there could be more variation. But at the same time, it might be too restricting because like what if we wanted to have a model for an entire block? I guess it could have options for both. And then also this scaling I have here, like I don't affect the normals, so I need to yeah, also adjust the normals so that they get, because right now I think they stick straight out, but they actually should stick slightly like this to go with the new face. So I'd have to do that for every point that gets um, changed. Uh, which is not a huge deal. I just, yeah, I don't really want to have to do all that work if I end up not using the system. But I did want to try this out to see how it looks. And I think, I think it could work. Because the style for the game I am going for is kind of like a Godzilla, like kind of plastic toys, action figure kind of look. So having blocks for the terrain does make sense. Yeah, so I just need to decide if I want to allow subdivided terrain blocks and the best way to handle that. I mean, it could have an option for both ways, but... Hmm. But yeah, so... I still have bit more to go but I think I'm gonna need some time to think about how I want to handle this so I think I'll just cut the stream just a few minutes short um, so yeah thanks everybody for coming by today tomorrow we'll probably work more on terrain um, I don't know I'll have made my decision on what to test out either that or I might let's see what's another project I could do I mean yeah we have camera control uh yeah we have more actions to do so maybe i can move on to something like that until i've decided for sure on the terrain uh yeah but anyway we'll continue with this tomorrow at noon eastern so thanks everybody for coming by i really do appreciate it feel free to follow me here on twitch or also on my twitter i uh, um post there whenever i go live um I have a YouTube channel if you'd like to catch up on any streams you might have missed. I am sure to always post everything there. It comes out usually a day after the stream. And then I have a Discord server where you can chat with me throughout the day. That'd be really cool to have you there. But I think that's about it. So yeah, thanks again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.